What is up guys, it is Power Bank. Welcome back to another PUBG Mobile episode. And you guys have been highly requesting tips, tricks, guides, advice, all kinds of stuff because you've seen my gameplays and you know you want to get chicken dinners just like Power Bang does. So guys, I've uh, won quite a few games now in solos and duos and squads and I'm going to share some of what I have learned on PUBG Mobile with you so that you've got the fundamentals down to be a solid player with a chance to win the game every single time you hit the battlefield. My first tip is actually probably something that you wouldn't expect me to say, and that is to jump into the action. You guys need to hit the ground running, get into as many gunfights as possible, hit the high population areas on the map, instead of wallowing around in, you know, the bushes somewhere, hiding in houses, laying down prone in the field, hiding behind trees, that's all fine and good once you've learned how to play and you know how to aim and you know how the guns work. But until you gain that valuable experience, it's much better for you guys to have quick games because you're going to get killed. But it's much better to hop into the action, figure out with trial and error, with, you know, learning from experience how it is to be able to play PUBG effectively. You're going to learn a lot of stuff really, really quickly because quite simply, you're going to do stuff wrong. You're going to get shot in the face and that's okay. Don't feel pressured just because you saw your buddy post a chicken dinner screenshot that you've got to go out and do the exact same thing or your manhood is in question. That is not the case. Go out, get slayed, get destroyed, but drop into high pop areas like the military base, like Pachinki, like the school. Make sure you're getting into the action, engaging people early on. Don't be reckless. I'm not saying just run in crazily, but go into these areas with a load of people. That way you can get the practice that you need in order to get better. There's no way to practice in PUBG so the only way to get good is by playing and putting in the hours. My second tip for PUBG noobs is going to tie in with the first, and that's how to drop in effectively with your parachute and get to where you want to go. Remember, you want to aim for areas that are going to have a higher population at the start. This will give you the most practice and also allow you to gain a big leg up on your competition early because you'll be able to loot a bunch of enemies once you eliminate them and also loot the surrounding areas that are all yours now. As a general rule, aim for areas on the map that have big names, such as cities. A big factor on where you drop will depend on the path of the plane, which is randomly selected each and every game. The plane will not always travel over the same areas or in the same direction, so going to the same place every single game will not be effective and you should not plan on that. A few notable places on the map are the school, Pachinki, and the military base. Pachinki and the school are the better options of these due to their central location on the map, and generally speaking, you'll spend far less time worrying about your positioning and whether or not you're in the safe zone. Pachinki and the school are almost always near the first couple of circles, so they're my top two choices to land. With school being the favorite due to being able to control the angles in which you fight much more effectively when you do get into that firefight early on. We can discuss more about this later, but now let's talk about how to get here. Check the path of your plane as you're flying into the island and select a drop location that's accessible from the path the plane will travel. You need to get good at geometry to quickly gauge how far away something is, but I've got a couple of easy tricks for you. You can open the mini-map by clicking it. Zoom in by pinching it just like you would in your photo gallery. Now tap the map to place a marker. Select a popular building or somewhere where you want to land. Now you can adjust the map to whatever size you'd like it to be when you land and then click the X to get back to the game. Now you have a marker on your compass at the top of the screen and you can use that for a visual indicator of not only the direction of which you're trying to jump, but also the distance and how far away your target is. Your max jump distance from the plane is roughly 1700 meters and to make it this far, you need to immediately hold up on the left joystick when you're exiting the plane. Keeping your body flat and increasing the friction and the drag as much as possible, that will allow you to fall slowly and increase the distance in which you can travel. Your short jump distance, so basically when you fly over the top of a city where you want to land, you want to jump at around 300 meters. If you're flying directly over your desired drop location, definitely consider jumping straight down as you'll hit the top drop speed of 234 kilometers per hour and arrive at the destination more quickly than those who just kind of floated there. Landing your parachute will take a bit more practice, but you can drag your left joystick around to pull the chute cords to steer your chute to the drop zone. Aim for roofs and balconies if possible and enter from the top down as it's easier to hold the ground from enemies entering in through the ground floor. My last little tip for gauging distance from the plane is to look at the mini-map again. Use the thick 
grid lines. Each square is 1,000 by 1,000 meters, and the smaller, lighter square inside those big squares are 100 by 100 meters. This will help you much more quickly judge if a location that is far into your flight path is actually in range of the plane, or if you should seek another target to drop in on. My number three tip for PUBG noobs is to understand your heals and your boosts, how they work, when to use them. I'm gonna give you guys some clues on that right now. There's three types of heals. There are bandages, there's first aid kits, and there's med kits. Bandages apply 10% of your health over seven seconds, and it takes four seconds to apply a bandage. They're primarily used in early game, or if you have 60% or more HP, they can also be used if first aid kits and med kits are in short supply, or you're trying to conserve those for later on in the game. I recommend that you use bandages after the fight once your immediate area is clear. Remember, they do take seven seconds and they are a heal over time. They're going to take a few seconds to apply the full 10% of your HP. You should never really need more than about 20 bandages, so anything additional that you're carrying is likely just sucking up your inventory space. The next type of heal is the first aid kit. 75% of your health is instantly restored when using this six second cast. First aid kits are probably the most commonly used heal in PUBG. They're not nearly as commonly found as bandages, but they're much more effective in battle. As you rack up the kills and loot bodies, you should find plenty of first aid kits to sustain yourself throughout the game. First aid kits are an instant heal, so you'll immediately be ready to get back into the fight, but remember, they do only heal you to 75%. Even if your health is at 50% when you begin the heal, theoretically putting you over 100%, it still caps at 75% and no more. You'll want to pair these with some boosters like energy drinks or painkillers, which we'll talk about in a moment, to regenerate your HP to 100%. When looting, always make room to take first aid kits and med kits. You never know when they'll save the game for you. Speaking of med kits, 100% of your health is instantly applied when you use this eight second cast. Med kits are one of the few items in the game that can help you reach full HP, and it's the only one that can refill your HP instantly. I shouldn't need to describe how highly valuable that is. These do not need any boosters with them in order to do so. Med kits are extremely rare and should always be picked up if you come across them. There's nothing like making an enemy player have to kill you multiple times because you can completely regenerate your entire health bar during a fight. Just remember that casting this med kit takes quite a long time coming in at 8 seconds, so make sure you have some cover from your enemy and can also view them if they do decide to rush you and try to take you out. Now healing I feel like is pretty intuitive to most players. You've got at hit points, healing replaces your hit points. If your hit points get to zero, you die. The game's over for you. But boosting is a little bit more subtle, and it requires a little bit more explanation. So let's talk about the three different boosts. First off, you can find your boost bar above your HP bar, and it's the little orange thin one that can get fully maxed out after taking consumable items. First of which we'll talk about is the energy drink. Energy drinks can be consumed to increase your boost by 40, and that boost will last roughly two minutes and regenerates around 23% of your total HP, and this takes about four seconds to drink an energy drink. Painkillers are another consumable item that takes six seconds to actually pop these pills, and this will increase your boost by 60, which lasts three minutes and regenerates around 40% of your HP, which makes them nearly doubly as effective as the energy drinks. Painkillers are much stronger, not quite twice as effective, but these can actually be coupled with energy drinks to do even more healing. I'll explain this in just a moment. Lastly, we've got the most rare type of consumable in the game, and that is the adrenaline shot. These can only be found in supply drop crates and will instantly fill your boost bar to 100. This takes eight seconds to actually apply this adrenaline shot, and I've got some facts for you as well when it comes to consumables and boosts. When you're boosted, your character regenerates health, but it also has increased movement speed, which makes you run faster, and that can help you escape that pesky gas when you're trying to get to the safe zone. The only time increased movement speed does not take effect is when you've only consumed one energy drink. Anything more than this, such as one painkiller or two energy drinks, your character will move much more quickly in addition to receiving the HP regen. Stacking consumables such as painkillers or energy drinks will make you heal faster, so the more the merrier. Max out that boost bar if you'd like, and you'll heal much more quickly than if you only consumed one energy drink. A full boost bar will last about five minutes and regenerate roughly 86% of your HP. Being boosted up prior to 
big firefights is extremely wise and also when you see that blue gas zone coming you want to make sure that you're all energy drinked up topped off on painkillers and you're ready to run into the safe zone expecting a firefight for anybody looking out at that gas line for any people late to get into the zone tip number four for PUBG mobile is to understand your weapons and ammunition this is going to be basic for many of you and especially those with familiarity with military games or guns in real life but I get a ton of questions about guns and ammo on what to use knowing which ammo goes with what gun and which gun is better to use in certain situations is the key to success in PUBG mobile picking up everything is generally a bad idea because your inventory space won't allow it even with a level 3 backpack and in late game when you need to loot quickly for example at a supply drop when you know there's a thousand eyes and probably scopes on you you won't have the space for what you really need to pick up so let's start with the basics weapons and their different types there's some subtypes such as melee bows and grenades but I'm only going to touch on the commonly found guns that you're going to get used to playing the game with here are the different types of guns that you're going to want to focus on picking up. Those are assault rifles, marksman rifles, sniper rifles, light machine guns, and submachine guns. There's various ammunition sizes that go with all of these guns. I will put them in order on the screen from smallest to largest, and those are the 9mm round, the 45 caliber, 5.56, 7.62, and 300 caliber rounds. Typically, you'll find that in pistols, they shoot the smaller ammunition, such as the 9mm and the 45 caliber. And so do the submachine guns. Submachine guns and pistols shoot the same stuff, but the submachine guns just have a higher magazine capacity and can fire faster at a longer range. This makes them much, much more efficient than pistols, and pistols are a last resort when you zone in. You should pick up the very first weapon that you come across no matter what, even if it's a pistol, so that at a minimum you're armed and dangerous, but ditch that thing in favor of nearly any other gun as soon as you possibly can. The next step up from submachine guns or SMGs is the assault rifles. These are your 5.56 rounds and your 7.62 rounds. 7.62 rounds are larger, heavier rounds and weapons that fire them typically will do much more damage than the weapons that fire 5.56. Assault rifles typically share ammunition with the marksman rifles and marksman rifles have a bit more power and range than an assault rifle does, but at a price of slower firing rates and smaller magazine sizes. A step up from the marksman rifles are the sniper rifles. Most of these fire 7.62 or 300 caliber rounds, which are the largest and do the most damage in the game. Snipers, as you'd expect, are precision instruments designed to be fired from a distance. They have a small magazine size and they are very slow to fire. Some of these rifles even have bolt action, which means one shot at a time. Lastly are the light machine guns. There's only a couple of these in the game and they have the largest magazine sizes and can put down a lot of firepower. They sacrifice some of the precision of an assault rifle, but they offer a ton of damage and fewer reloads, albeit when they do reload, it takes a very long time. Light machine guns are fairly uncommon. The ideal loadout for nearly every PUBG mobile situation entails an assault rifle of some kind, so be on the hunt for ARs early along with 5.56 ammo and 7.62 ammo. Pick up all of that that you find, and once you figure out what weapon that you're going to be toting around, you can ditch any unnecessary ammunition. In order to ditch items and actually remove them from your inventory, all you have to do is click the backpack, click and hold the item that you want to get rid of, and drag it off of your inventory screen onto the ground. Once that's done, it's gone out of your inventory, and you can actually help other people out by giving them things like med kits if they need them you click and drag them onto the ground at your feet somebody else can actually loot that item tip number five for PUBG noobs is to understand your armor and the levels that go along with them there's two types of armor in this game you can get a vest you can get a helmet there's three levels of each type of armor and level one two and three increase the amount of protection against projectiles accordingly at level one your armor is going to be reducing 30 percent of the incoming damage at level two you're going to reduce 40 percent of the incoming damage and at level three you reduce the most damage at 55 percent as you take damage in a certain area of the body if you get shot in the chest a couple of times but manage to survive your armor can actually break it can be weakened it can break your armor will protect you from incoming fire until it has just 1% HP remaining but once that's gone it will do no protection whatsoever and you will absorb shots as though you were wearing no armor at all so once it starts to get red you want to make sure that you ditch that armor and find new armor even if the armor that you're finding and replacing it with is a level below what you're currently wearing that's something that a lot of new players don't understand is they think that they picked up a level 3 vest early on in the game but 
it's completely broken and red, and they don't want to swap it out for a level 1 vest even though it's at full health and it's completely intact later on. Keep an eye on your armor, no matter what level it is, and if it does get broken or red, there is no repairing it. You can only swap it out with the loot from somebody you killed or somebody that died, or you can find it in a building or out in the field or somewhere in the world. Make sure that any loot that you do pick up off of somebody that you shot that you didn't actually break their armor while shooting them because you might be swapping out broken gear for broken gear. Tip number six I have is to pay attention to your inventory and make sure you maintain a clean and orderly backpack. You can do this by refraining from picking up every single piece of loot that you come across and only taking things that you know you're going to include in your loadout. These types of things include the guns that you plan on using as well as only the ammunition that goes to those guns and only the attachments that go to those guns as well. Oftentimes as you move away from early game where you've got a certain group of weapons and you find better weapons later on, that means you want to drop the first set of weapons that you got in addition to the ammunition that went with them or the attachments that went with them if they're not compatible with the current weapons that you have in your loadout. The only exception to this is if you're looting for your teammates, if you're squatting up or playing duos, and you're going to eventually drop that inventory for them at a different location. In addition, one more exception that I would make to this rule is if that you're looting early on in the game for what you're going to use during mid-game, such as assault rifle ammo when you come across, say, in the school, some 762 rounds, even though you okay, don't have an AKM on hand, you might come across one of those later on, or another gun that commonly uses that ammunition, so you may pick up that assault rifle ammo in plans for using it later on down the road. Other than that, don't carry anything that you don't absolutely need. Now one thing that's different from some of the other Battle Royale games that I've played, and some games in general, is that in this game, PUBG Mobile, there is bullet drop. My seventh tip is to account for bullet drop and travel distance as you're firing your weapon. Make sure as the target gets further and further away from you when you're firing with, say, a sniper rifle or long distance with an assault rifle, that you're leading your target. If they're in a vehicle that's traveling at a high rate of speed, you need to move your crosshairs further out in front of them than you would if they were running straight at you. In addition, as the target is further away from you, you need to put your crosshair actually above their head to account for gravity and the distance that the bullet will fall downwards as it makes its way towards your target. Now, weapon velocity does play a factor so each weapon does have a little bit different of a bullet drop, but I would highly recommend that you just experiment a little bit with each weapon. Just have in the back of your mind that if a target is moving at a high rate of speed or is really far away, you need to compensate for that distance or that movement with your aim and put that crosshair a little bit differently above or to the side of your target, or both. Now here's tip number eight for PUBG noobs, and this is probably the most important of the video, so pay attention. You have to respect the gas, but also use the safe zone to your advantage. Positioning inside and outside of the safe zone is incredibly important, especially during late game. Recognizing when you need to move and when you should stay put are key decisions you'll need to make and they'll oftentimes be the reason for your victory or defeat. The first thing to realize is that the white circle on the map is the safe zone. Inside of the circle, you are safe and cannot be hurt by gas. A timer will count down to zero and a larger blue circle will collapse from the outer regions of the map and collapse towards the white circle. Everything outside of the boundaries of the blue circle is in the gas and the gas will do damage to your player over time and it will kill you pretty quickly. Some things to take note of. Gas hurts less in early game and hurts massively during late game. Gas does damage over time and can be counteracted by a sufficient amount of boosts that are applied to your player, which are heals over time. This will actually buy you additional time to make your way to the safe zone, especially if you're stuck on foot. If things are real bad, you can always stop to apply a med kit or a first aid kit while in the gas to buy some more time to get to the safe zone. Remember to apply these heals well in advance of when you'd actually need them to account for the damage you'll take during the cast time of the heal. Bandages are not worth stopping to apply as they do a heal over time effect, which is counteracted by the gas damage, so it's better to just keep running if you only have bandages. Some players will choose to use the gas to their advantage by intentionally staying out of the first couple of circles and fully boosting up so they don't lose too much HP, but they're the last to enter the safe zone. This tactic 
tactic is called playing the circle and it will allow you to sneak up behind many players who had their attention focused towards the center of the circle and you'll catch them off guard as you'll be coming from behind them where they'd least expect it. As a general rule, you cannot outrun the gas in most situations. The gas is faster than you are on foot by a small amount, but vehicles are a different story. If you have access to a vehicle, it's even less risky to delay your approach to the safe zone because you can outrun the gas easily with a car or motorcycle. For situational awareness, the entire blue circle will collapse at a rate so the blue and white circles have their points converge at the exact same time. This means if you're on the far side of the blue circle from the white safe zone, you really need to haul ass to get to the zone as the blue zone will be traveling much faster than you can run. And if you're on the side of the blue circle where the white circle is also on, or perhaps even shares a portion of the same circle, you may not have to move at all. And if you do, you can do it very slowly and even after the timer expires and the gas begins to constrict the zone. You can use your mini map and markers to help you head in a direction you want to go. It's generally a good idea to do one of two things. You get to the very center of the zone as soon as possible during the game and fortify a strong defensive position that you'll defend people from trying to close in on you. Or you'll ride the outer portion of the circle as each zone collapses and fight your way into the final area. These decisions are based on your loadout, the location of the safe zone, and your surrounding terrain, so there's really no way to plan this in advance like before the game. You have to adapt based on the situation. The key thing to remember in late game is if you're in an advantageous position while in the safe zone, the white circle, don't move. Make the enemy come to you and shoot them when they leave their fortified and defended positions. If you have to go to them due to the zone, be aggressive and realize they have a tactical advantage. It isn't impossible to overcome, but the odds of winning when you sit in the safe zone with your butt up against the blue and white border are exponentially higher. Position yourselves well, young Padawans. Now, tip number nine for PUBG Mobile is something that I feel is absolutely mandatory, and that is good audio. Now, whether that means you've got in your earbuds or whether you have a high-end SteelSeries Arctis Pro headset, I don't think it necessarily matters a lot. Obviously, with the higher-end headsets, you've got better sound, but any sound will do, and you'll be able to pinpoint directions of audio cues, such as gunfire, footsteps, vehicle noises, etc. Could you imagine being without sound and having bullet sounds whizzing by your head? Yes, that actually happens, and you'd never even know. You'd just be standing there, waiting to get popped in the melon from somebody firing at you with a sniper rifle. So in addition to audio cues and being able to point your character at where you think those sounds are coming from, you can also check the mini-map. Check your mini-map for sounds when you hear things like gunfire. When gunfire erupts, immediately look at the mini-map because there's red areas on that map if it's close by, and you'll be able to see exactly the direction that that gunfire erupted from. Now, when things like a suppressor or silencer is on a weapon, it makes the area that that could have come from a lot wider, and you'll have to do a little bit more triangulation to figure out where that sound is coming from but as a general audio cue you'll at least have an idea of where to point your weapon where to face and which direction to run in order to engage those targets highly highly recommend audio for your PUBG matches tip number 10 and my last tip although I could go on and on and on about PUBG mobile and how to play this game better you'll have to subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks is to use the terrain effectively terrain is huge in this game. It can provide you with a massive tactical advantage over your enemies and those who would like to push your position. You can use terrain to not only protect you uh, in firefights where people know where you're at. You can use berms and the, the incline of a slope to protect your character while only exposing small portions of your head in order to survey the scene. You can also secure the high ground, which is always a good idea because you can look down on the other people, having a tactical advantage of shooting down we're towards them rather than you know, trying to shoot upwards at somebody that can easily duck behind a ridge or the crest of the mountain. In an ideal situation, you want to position yourself to be able to look with great lines of sight and vision in a particular direction, especially a direction that is going to be high traffic and very likely that enemies will come from, while at the same time having behind you the way you're not facing protected and you not only being, you know, not visible, but also having the ability to 
see a long distance in that direction as well by simply popping up now and again to clear the area. You'll see here on the screen that I've got a perfect position and I'm able to hold this ground silently, stealthily, and effectively as people charge up to be in the safe zone. I'm able to wipe them off the face of the map without them ever knowing I was there. So guys, that is going to do it for today's episode on PUBG. I wanted to give you guys out there that are beginning the game, just picking it up, which is a lot of us. The game just came out a week ago, so don't feel sad. Don't feel ashamed that you're a noob, because quite honestly, I am too. I've just put in some hours. I've put in some games. I'm climbing up the ranks, and I wanted to share with you guys the tips that I'm finding to get a lot of chicken dinners. Guys, subscribe to the channel for more Battle Royale action. More PUBG is on the way soon. I've got multiple gameplays recorded. Got some chicken dinners to share with y'all. That's all I have for now, y'all. Keep in mind, what do you want to see for next tips and tricks? What did I miss? Let me know in the comments below, guys. I will check y'all soon. This is Power Bank signing out. Take care.